Are you still riding? So I have bad news and good news. <laughs> Uh -oh. So, so it's, 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 it's uh, hopefully you won't look at me like I'm a glober or a uh, skier if you're a snowboarder. I switched to the one wheel. Oh, for crying out. No, I'm going to have to beat you up now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a snowboarder. I can't ski. The problem was I have a broken ankle and the one wheel, the, the uni was um, tearing into my left ankle bone, which sticks out. And I tried everything. I put gelatin pads and uh, oh. I just, I'm more, I'm more of a carver like myself. So. I can go fast. I can keep up with the with you uni guys, and um, you know, I hope you uh, uh, will allow okay. other other beliefs in this flat realm. We'll, we'll just look down on you when we see you. <laughs> it's all right. I'll, I'll look back at you when I see you. So uh, yeah, from, uh, from way behind. I look. I look behind. I look behind when you're behind me. <laughs> so you. That's you talking about the unicycle. I don't know if you have a unicycle. You have a is yours three uh wheeled or something? Electric? No, no, Dave's got the one wheel, the one wheel oh, unicycle, yeah. and it's phenomenal. Yeah. And um, it's, it's and I have insane. the one that's like a snowboard. Oh. We don't say anything, oh. Dave. Oh, no, you oh. don't say anything because I've got one that, that's wow. cheap. I'll oh, forget it. <laughs> I was going to show it, but uh, <laughs> but you've got Just, that stupid background right. thing on. I, I've seen you ride on it in your in your in YouTube and uh. That was awesome. Yeah, that was, that was to help you get around, and that's 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 cool. Oh, that works. On your... They're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. Mark, are you good? are you good, Mark? I don't know. Did did you? Uh... Whoa! D ignore what just happened there. <laughs> I went I went to my channel and uh, in in uh, Mozilla, and they just started auto playing the commercials. So sorry about that. If you got if you want to go live on yours, Mark, you're you're welcome nope, to or nope, anybody nope, else. No, I don't. <laughs> nope. Your show. I'll just share your show when you put it up. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. Uh I really do. So are you guys uh, ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let me get to my notes before I start. So And then first off, I just before we start, I just want to say thank you guys. Seriously, I really appreciate you guys all getting together. This is a uh, going to be a, a great milestone for for everybody in this community. Three of the legends ready to go. Uh, right. Three people that aren't afraid to talk, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> right? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I am your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. And uh, today we have a, a, a mega show. Uh, some people would call it a round table. I would call it a flat table. Okay, so today we have um, allegedly Dave. We have Mark Sargent. And Dave Weiss all together on one show. So thank you guys so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, this is going to be an amazing, uh, I think, an amazing show. So first off, guys, what I would like to go through is Romans 3, 3 through 4. It says, for what reason, if, uh, if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make their faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, uh, that thou mightest be justified in the sayings and, and, and mightiest uh, overcome when thou art judged. Okay. So let me tell you guys what man says real quick. Okay. Man says that there was a big bang, uh, in the universe, 13.8 billion years ago. And it says 14 or 4.6 billion years ago, the sun formed 4.5 billion years ago, the earth formed. And, uh, it said 60 to 175 million after that, the moon formed. Okay. And, and, uh, so what does God say? God says on day one, he created the heaven and the earth. Day two, he created the oceans and the firmament. The dry land, day three, the dry land, plants and vegetation. And day four, he created the moon, sun, and the stars also. So I'm just letting you guys know, besides the fact that nothing was rotating uh, around the earth, on, or around the sun on day three, also they're trying to give it to you as if the stars were created first, the sun second, the moon, or the earth, and then the moon. So they even mess it up there, you know? So I challenge you Christians, <clears throat> Uh, any, anybody that's into the Bible that want to step on the word a hundred, or want to be part of the word a hundred percent to just read Genesis one through one nineteen and find out exactly what God was saying there. Okay, guys, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, I take it literal and, uh, it will open up your eyes to what we're about to talk about today. So first off, uh, guys, uh, I want to say, obviously, thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate it. And, uh, and I want to ask you guys. Can you guys come up with like three of your best proofs that, that you feel like are, that, that the earth is flat? What is your, what is your like best proofs? Yeah, Dave Weiss, you could start if, you, if you'd like, and we'll go. 
I mean, the simplest one is water relentlessly seeks the ultimate base level, lays flat, testably, measurably, scientifically, provably flat, large bodies of water. And I mean that, I mean anything bigger than a gallon of water. Don't give me the whole drop nonsense, Globies. Um, and that's that's the biggest one. That's the one that got me. And then uh, my second one is um, Dave Murphy said it. Said the earth was flat. <laughs> 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 I'm like, hey, that guy, he must know something. And then I started listening to Dave. <laughs> okay, cool. So I, I guess I'm the, the Neil deGrasse Tyson of the flat earth world. Huh? <laughs> there you go. Well, you, you kind of, yeah, I think you are. When I listened to you, I listened to you on uh, the, the movie level. I uh, I immediately was like, was was drawn to listening to you. And, and also uh, Dave Weiss and Mark Sargent, you guys are, are are very intelligent and in this community, you know, so I know some people would probably judge us and say that none of us are, um, you know, intelligent or smart or, you know, Josh, so when did you, when did you come into flat earth? What, what brought you in? What was the first thing that brought you in? Sorry to interrupt with my, no, my you, question, but you can, you guys can ask me whatever questions you want. Cause I'm on the biblical side you, you, and I think allegedly Dave is a biblical side and Mark, you, you believe it. And I think you, I, I believe you believe the biblical side as well, Dave's, but um, for me, uh, it was on episode uh, three. It was a couple episodes before I had you on. I what I did is I just I heard about it a while back, but I never actually committed to it. But once I opened up the Bible and I just started going verse by verse in Genesis, and and then I found out about uh, Joshua ten one, and then I found out about uh, Habakkuk where he's talking about the the sun stop. Um, all this stuff was opening my eyes. So I think it was episode three. Uh, and then when I had you on, obviously you like, you stamped it for sure on, on the, on the secular side and, and the Bible, once the Bible says it for me, my whole foundation and everything is the Bible. So once I found out the Bible says it, I, I just 100% committed to it. And I would do every single show after that. Well, so let, let me just throw out one thing though. Um, before flat earth, I disregarded anything that had to do with any sort of creator at all. And flat earth, showed me there's a creator um when when now like my co-host matt long on the flat earth podcast he comes from the bible side 100 percent. he bible is the first thing he mentions and everything but if you have somebody that's not a bible believer how are you going to convince them the earth is flat with the bible if they don't believe the bible there's nothing you can quote out of there that'll mean anything to them so i always like to lead with the science because the, the actual science not the stupid scientism um works for all people that have working minds and then those on the Bible side can back it up with the Bible. I'll throw it back to you guys, Dave. Yeah, well, um, my my point of view on this is um, is going from the common sense side of it. Yeah, you, know, you can do the science, you can do the biblical thing, but the common sense view is is obvious enough for everyone, I think. Um, so my my favorite proof is actually uh, the gyroscope. And um, I, I, you know, I hadn't really considered this idea until um, I was actually flying to Macedonia for that uh, Macedonian talk, um, a television appearance. And I had, I thought I had to come up with some ideas to, to actually speak on. Um, so I was sitting on the plane and I was thinking, well, OK, in this plane, there's a gyroscope in the artificial horizon. And uh, I thought, well, if the plane is going over the curve of the horizon, then the artificial horizon should actually start rolling backwards. And so I started, I actually asked the pilot and he said, uh, oh, no, we never have to um, have to adjust the artificial horizon in mid-flight. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just I have to step back on this then. Um, thing about a gyroscope, when you spin a gyroscope, it is what's known as rigid in space. It is, you know, it, it spins around um, and, and wants to stay in its orientation no matter what. It, you know, it doesn't matter where it is on Earth, it doesn't matter the direction of gravity, nothing. It will just stay in its, in its orientation, okay? And it will resist anyone trying to change that orientation. So in the artificial horizon, it's based on a gyroscope. They spin it up just before they take off and get the reference to the local ground, you know, the ground level. OK, now the plane, as it takes off, it literally the plane moves around the gyroscope. OK, so the gyroscope maintains that that reference to level. So when that plane goes over the curve of the horizon, it should, again, maintain its, its rigidity in space. Um, and it does. And even the, the Globers have to um, acknowledge it because 
first time they, they started to try and debunk it, the first thing they would say is, oh, but the gyroscope aligns to the center of the earth and we could disprove it, we disprove that. And um, then they had to come back with pendulous veins and things like that. But mm. um, the gyroscope for me remains the top, you know, um, proof for the flat earth. Nice. Okay. And, and Mark Sargent, you have the proofs, uh, you know, in, in your video. So I'm sure you have a lot as well. You're muted, Mark. Thank you, by the way, for mentioning that before I even said a word. <laughs> I, I know tried. your style. I know your Thank style. You, Thank you. Thank you. I try not to hit the mute button. I sw and uh, all right. Anyway, uh, the, the three big ones for me were the uh, the ones I didn't include. The ones that I learned later uh, first would have been long distance photography because I never mentioned photography in, in the clues. And people just start calling me up. It's like, yeah, dude, I went to the beach and, you know, started shooting long distance. I'm going, why the hell would you do that? It's like, because water, it's, it's absolutely level all the time. I'm going, it's perfectly flat because I was a big fan of the, uh, the Orlando Ferguson map when I, when I first did this. Uh, the second one, which is my favorite, uh, uh, is gravity versus um, the vacuum of space. I, I love using that example on people because it, it, especially if you have anybody with a science background, because it usually stops them dead in their tracks. Because they, they just don't know what to do with it. It's like, uh, 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 next question. And uh, last but not least would be the, um, the Van Allen radiation belts, which I'm going to talk about this week in, in my podcast because when they're preparing, Dave, you probably saw they're postponing the, uh, the Artemis mission, the, um, <laughs> which is the... Um, uh, they there actually, was too, too many people watching close up. They yeah, had to exactly. It. I, I seriously don't know how they're <laughs> going to pull that off. But in one of the articles, they actually they were talking about cosmic radiation versus the Van Allen radiation. And they actually said the same. I'm not kidding you. The quote is the safety of the Van Allen belts. It's like, what are you talking about? How did that even happen? Like the, the Van Allen belts. Oh, no, you're perfectly fine there. It's when you get out of there in the cosmic radiation. So anyway, um. Those, those are definitely my big three, and uh, I, I use them whenever can, I can. Sorry, go ahead. Can go I ahead, ask, Dave. Can I ask, um, uh, can you expand on the gravity one? Because I don't think I've heard you talking about Oh, that sure. You, well, okay, maybe versus. you haven't. So gravity versus the uh, the vacuum of space, which is, um, and, and Dave usually does it with a straw and a glass, how, you know, gravity is, you know, you could actually create a little vacuum field, you know, and, and how can you suck soda, you know, through a straw? And what I try to remind people is there's there's lots of things in the movies which are done for dramatic effect. And one of them is, is that they absolutely diminish the power of a vacuum. And I know scientists are like, there's no such thing as the power of vacuum, you know, where, you know, you get a hole in the fuselage in a spaceship and, and you just hear this, you know, it's like, oh, we only have two minutes of air left. Somebody gets something, you know, some chewing gum to, to stick in the hole. And they stick their thumb in the hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I try to remind people, like, look, look, you don't have to be in space to do this. We, we've got, you know, between submarines and um, uh, deep, deep wells, oil, you know, rigs. There's some pressure environments. We've had some horrible accidents in the past. And people don't get that it's absolutely instantaneous, absolutely instantaneous. The when when, you know, the vacuum versus non-vacuum, it's there's no there's no middle ground there. And uh, I, I encourage people to look up. There's a wonder, there's wonderful video. I don't know why the Germans do this uh, called vacuum versus a steel rail car, where oh, yeah. they apply a vacuum to the inside of a steel, not aluminum rail car, and it absolutely crushes it instantaneously. Anyway, point is, is that if you had a vacuum chamber above you uh, in your second floor of your, of your building with a valve and you pop that valve, what would happen to be instantaneous that it would equalize? Right. It'd be, you know, in fact, you might even be sucked up. Your head might get stuck up there, but it'd be really violent and very instantaneous. And the, the vacuum would do it every single time. And I go, OK, when you go outside. What happens? I go, why? Why is our atmosphere still here? And I, every single time, every single time uh, the knee jerk response says, well, it's, it's gravity. It's gravity. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your living room from going upstairs? The, that gravity? Right there. And I've even had people, a physicist once say they, they wanted to say it. It's like, well, there's one more. I go, more gravity? You mean different gravity? Oh, yeah, there's the steel rail car right there. It's absolutely brutal. You know, the every space space show in Hollywood ever would be uh, would be, you know, cut short because everyone would die. 
you know, at the, end, at the end of Aliens, I feel bad because Aliens is one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever, where Sigourney Weaver is climbing the ladder and she's exposed to space, right? And, and it's taking, you know, a, like a full minute to get empty air out of that bay. I'm going, no. I, and, you know, I, would, I bought it. Sure, why not? So, so yeah, that's, that's, the, that's my favorite. And it takes a little while to explain to people, but they get it. And, and I've asked every single time, you know, throw it at scientists. They, they, I go, what happens at the bleeding edge of space? Mark, you, you, have the, you have the challenge out there to go in uh, and wearing a, a spacesuit into a vacuum chamber oh, yeah, with yeah, another yeah. astronaut. Yeah. And here's the thing. We all know, Globers, Flat Earthers, kindergartners know that if you put something in the uh, you know, high pressure, like a bottle, into a low pressure thing, it will expand if not explode. Okay? Get a pole and spring bottle and, you know, fill it, um, close it. Um, while you're on the ground and then just go up on an airplane where you barely even notice the slight difference in pressure and right. then you open it psh, and then then close it up there when you land it'll crush on the way down yep and that's in a pressurized cabin imagine if they depressurize the cabin okay oh, yeah. so astronauts are out there wearing their freaking snowboarding suits with their zippers and their laces and and soft material and it doesn't explode it doesn't expand and and no one will address this on right. the other side. They will ignore it or they'll they'll go, well, it's less than one atmosphere. I don't care if it's a tenth of an atmosphere. It's going to explode in a low pressure environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And well, and then you know, and then the other thing that just expand on what you're saying before is they say there's a pressure gradient, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter, thinner and thinner and thinner yeah, until oh, there's oh, then, there, then there's a vacuum of space. That's not how it works. No, no. And <laughs> let, let me let me cover that really quick because some people will say, oh, yeah, by the time you get to space, it's this trickle trickle thing. Right. And yeah. I've talked to a number of scientists that have said that it's like, oh, there's just so little pressure difference there. And I'm going, that's not how it works. I go. My example is take any box, any, any cardboard box, put some packing popcorn in it, pick you know a little bit of tape on the bottom, pick it up. No problem whatsoever. OK, put the box back down, put a whole bunch of heavy books on the top of that packing popcorn, then pick it up. What happens? The books just punch through, you know, and, and you got packing popcorn, a big mess everywhere. Why? It, why is that important? I go, because vacuum doesn't care about just the little particles at the edge, if you believe. They, they're going to go after everything. If there's a pressure difference all the way to the ground, in fact, once it got to the ground, they would take the oceans with it because oceans boil at, at, uh, at, at uh, room temperature. So, yeah, it's again. Uh, most uh, okay. I was just gonna. Sorry, one more, one more. Oh, you can add it. Go ahead. Uh, for sure. Yeah, Dave, Dave mentioned it um, about the uh, spacesuit. Um, so I was taking a close look at Neil Armstrong's spacesuit. Yeah. And uh, if you look at, if you look, there's a, there's like a cod piece that's uh, you know attached down there in the, the groin area. Okay, attached with two poppers essentially. And I was wondering what the hell that was. Now, if you go and look at the um, Neil Armstrong spacesuit that's hanging in the museum, you'll see that they, it doesn't have that cod piece. That cod piece was removed. Underneath the cod piece is a zip. <laughs> it's a zip for them to, to be able to go. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, the, 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 the spacesuit has always worked because, and I've asked people outside the country, in America, I, I don't, I, I get it, it's different, but outside the country, it's like, why did you believe the Americans went to the moon? It's like, because it was on television. So, yeah, man. of course. Um, okay, so quick question for you, Mark. So uh, do you believe in the Van Allen radiation belts, even right. even with, yeah, the, right. with the flat earth, or, or were you just mentioning it to, be, uh, to go against them going to the moon, or do you- Oh, no, you well, no, no, you know, I, mentioned, I mentioned the Van Allen radiation belts because that was their answer to stop, try to deter people from going up, Yeah. which is you tell people, you know, in 1959, you say, oh, yeah, there's this horrible, horrible, deadly Van, you know, belt of radiation up there that's thousands of miles thick. And then Kennedy screwed the whole thing up the very next year where he goes, you know, we choose to go to the moon and this decay, do the other thing. It's like, come on. And, and then they had to go back to Van Allen and they said, okay, how are you going to get past it? You know, your, your, your discovery. And his answer literally was, well, we're, we're going to go really, really fast. Like, okay. Huh. Do we all believe that there's a firmament up there? Uh, all three of us, uh, or is that still open for interpretation for some of you? I believe there's a barrier, but that's for me. Dave? Oh, I, I, I <laughs> absolutely believe. I absolutely believe we're, um, it, there was a, a barrier, a firmament. Um, I believe we're in a, a, a bubble of 3D, 3D space and time. 
Yeah, spicy and time exists here. There's a lot of flat earthers that say, yeah, there has to be a dome because you can't have um, zero pressure next to pressure. I don't believe the space is zero pressure. Oh, there I don't go. think any of us do. So, but there is some sort of dome. What's it made out of? We can talk about that all day. Glass, ice, pressure, you know, who knows what it is. Um, but I believe, and I, I say that with believe, because uh, we don't have, you know, rock solid proof, but I think there is a preponderance of evidence. Yeah. Okay, so can I ask you, do you guys, okay, so in the Bible, uh, in Ezekiel, in Isaiah, um, uh, in a few spots, it talks about God's throne being above the firmament, right? So <clears throat> it's kind of crazy because what, um, what some people would believe is that the firmament must be outside of the universe. So we have, if you talk about the globe model, then what's happening is the globe would be here. And if God's throne is above the firmament and it's outside of uh, the universe, then what's happening with the universe? They say it's ever expanding. So what would be happening is exactly what science is doing. Uh, it's going to be going further and further and further away from you. Uh, and that's what science is doing. They're bringing you further and further, further away from God. So I think it's important to, to note that where do I don't know where non are not non Christians. I don't know where Christians that believe in the globe would place the firmament. Uh, allegedly, Dave, do you believe that God's throne is above the firmament? Um, okay, as I said, I, I, I actually believe that we're in a bubble of 3D space and time. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there is no outside of here because that would be more 3D space and time. Yeah, so, um, it's, it's, not, it's not a physical realm where the most high exists. You know, because we are we are a part of the mind of the most high, essentially. So he created this realm of 3D space and time, but we, we <laughs> exist in it. The most high is everything. Yeah. He, um, I, I would call the most high the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, it, it goes off infinitely one way and infinitely off the other way. And we are just a, a little sort of slither, sliver of 3D space of time. So okay, yeah. So Sorry. is is God so God would be outside of space and time, which everybody does believe that that's Christian, Jewish, everybody does. What about his angels? Because he does have a court in the Bible, like in First Kings, where he's actually speaking to uh, something called the Divine Council. So now that's going to be angels, and and it seems like spirits that he's talking to, and he's asking one of them to go down and speak to a king, and he asked him, "What are you going to be?" He said, "A lying spirit." So what I'm what I like to ask people that believe in the Bible and believe in the flat Earth. Now, there has to be a court there with angels. Now, if the devil was outside of space and time, then he would be able to know, you know, the future, the past and everything. Everybody says, well, the devil's not outside of space and time. OK, well, are his angels outside of space and time? So what I believe personally is that there's a physical location. Now, God can be outside of space and time, but his angels, I don't believe can be because there's some that are locked in a bottomless pit, which is which is said in, <laughs> in the Bible, which are physically they, locked in a pit. But um, I just they do to take on human form, though. That's they the do. It's Hebrews 13, on, 1, first and in Lot. Yes, they, they can, so yeah. They can exist, they, they exist in a spiritually spiritual realm. Um, yeah. that's you know, we, we don't have words for it because we are 3D space and time creatures. Yes, so, but the realm beyond this, they exist there, but they can take on a yes. form of uh, a 100%. human become physical. Um, so yeah, I agree. okay, all right, that's that's interesting. Uh, and uh let me ask you guys, uh, uh, Dave Weiss and Mark Sargent, if uh, if you believe in heaven, uh, where would you think heaven would be located? That's an interesting question. Um, I think that heaven would be a non-physical um, layer somewhere within this realm or above this realm. Okay. Um, that's kind of how I envision it. I, I. That, that's how I, that's our envision it. just jumping back to um god being at the at the throne at the center of the earth this is just a funny observation i'm not saying i believe it but you know how when we hear depictions of god speaking it's this almighty echoing voice it's like you know how 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 you hear it all the time i did a, i just made a video a couple of days ago about um how thunder sounds in a dome and uh, these guys went into this big dome and they went into the middle and they started talking and they sounded like God almighty, you know, the, the sound. So if God was going to present himself 
where everyone on earth could see, he'd be up high in the center and his voice would sound, it would reverberate everywhere. Yeah. So it was very, it just, I kind of liked it. You know, don't know what it means. <laughs> I, yes. Um, so, you know, in the New Testament, uh, when Jesus is baptized, uh, God is speaking, right? He, he says that this is my son, that I'm well pleased, right? Um, so it sounds like he's, you know, a lot closer than people say. Um, if it was, and also like uh, Ezekiel and Paul both went to, went, went to heaven in the Bible. Ezekiel says that he went up and, and above the firmament, he saw God's throne. And then Paul was talking about um, going to the third heaven, which would be, you know, God's throne. He doesn't mention anything about traveling, you know, through through galaxies and 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 going past suns and all these different galaxies to get there, you know, because obviously his firmament would be outside of the moon, sun, and the stars, because that's what he said. He put the firmament, right? So I just think it's pretty interesting. But um, there's some proofs I, I do I just believe. Have to in. Correct. I just have to correct you a bit. It actually yes. says it doesn't say the most high spoke. It says a voice. Yeah, did a, vo a booming voice. It didn't say it was most high. Okay. Just, just what I it's correct okay. that. Sorry. It's okay. No problem. So yeah, I think it's interesting. Now, if there was a hell, um, I know this is off the subject of if there was a hell, uh, if you do believe in hell, uh, where would you guys believe that hell was located? I, I believe the, the Bible is pretty clear that hell is located in the earth below us. Where How do you guys think hell would be located? Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 I would have said New Jersey, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you guys believe in hell? Just, just asking. Yeah, I do. I, I no. think it's an. I think it's another dimension, though, another frequency. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. No, I, the, 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 as far as I'm concerned, the book doesn't talk. It doesn't um, yeah. a, a include a heaven or a hell. Heaven ah. is actually here. Right, you know, in that if you call that a concept, the concept of heaven, it's actually here. Um, and for for he, for us, hell, there is no hell as such. Um, again, except a living know, hell, except yeah, your own living, living yeah. except your own living hell. So that's what I'm saying. When 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 I think about how people are doing, they for not being new agey, I say we vibrate at a certain frequency. We, we vibrate at a certain level. The higher you vibrate, the more in sync you are with this world. And so you're vibrating at a higher, lighter frequency that could be considered heaven. And when you're in hell, you're vibrating at a low, fearful frequency. Um, and you're attracting all of that garbage that comes with that vibration. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the saying birds of a feather flock together. Well, people of high vibration attract people with high vibration. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. So let's get back to the, uh, to the flat earth part. So, Okay, do you think when they said that, that, that the Earth is an oblique spheroid or pear shape was damage control because the flat earthers started breaking down that when it, when the, in its actual like curvature? Do you think it's that was damage it, control? It's all damage control. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because of what you guys are doing, right? I mean, the, 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 I, I well, believe. What do you think? To, to be fair to, to Neil Tyson, I believe, and someone will have to look this up, I believe the whole pear shaped oblate spheroid thing was, was, uh, was before us, I think. But I think so also because I don't think he would have said it once we came along. Okay. Because every uh, because every photo that's ever taken of Earth is almost pixel perfect spheroid. And the argument is you wouldn't notice a 14 mile high bump. You know, with the Earth being an oblate spheroid, spheroid, if you shrink it down to the size of a pool ball, he said it would be smoother than than the cue ball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With Mount Everest and everything on there. Okay, yeah. which is just a bunch of nuts. Yeah, but, yeah. Again, why would you? But why would you ever say pear shaped? You wouldn't. In fact, if uh, that was the case, yeah, that's when he started doing the damage control because pear shaped. He should have. He should have had a writer at the end of that where he was like, "Well, it's pear shaped, but it's imperceptible." It's like, well, then why would you? Why would you call it pear shaped? <laughs> Good, Dave. Well, he had to. He has to say it's pear shaped because. Um, you know, the distances in the Southern Hemisphere, right? There's more land, there's more area in the Southern mm. Hemisphere. There is no physics. There is no actual physics for the Earth being a pear shaped because, you know, um, the, the, the forces that he was talking about, you know, the spinning Earth, molten and everything, will, would act, you know, on the whole Earth and it would be, you know, a, a sphere, maybe yeah. a blade sphere, but there's no physics for a pear shape. Wow. So, but he had to say that because there's more there's more area in the southern hemisphere so that has to account for it 
Josh, another uh, speaking of Southern Hemisphere, another one of my my favorite ones is plane flight. So we all know how you know Southern flights make these ridiculous jaunts cutting across. So I ask people if on a globe, if you wanted to go from any Northern airport to any other Northern airport, any combination anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, would you ever cross the equator? And most people actually are able to think it out and go, well, no, right? Because no matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, get a globe and get, you know, pick any two spots in the Northern Hemisphere and draw a flight path, you never go below the equator. And they say no, and I go, you're right. No Northern flights ever cross below the equator. Well, Southern would be the same thing. Any two Southern locations, you would never go above, but as we know, many, many do, okay? That's really good. When did you come up with that? Um, <laughs> a couple of months ago. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah but really, really good. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, we all stem off of each other. I don't claim, I, you know, whether, I don't even know where it came from, but by, by everybody <laughs> listening to everybody else, I, I don't want any credit for anything. Hey, <laughs> everyone, take everything and run with it. Run with it. Like, if I hear you say something good, I'm taking it and I'm running with it. All right. And if I forget <laughs> to credit you, that's because I forgot to credit you. Okay. Dave, Dave <laughs> but, on purpose. but, but think about it though. That, that, that is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the other, and the other thing is along with that, um, you know, the Globers go, well, you know, the, these people, they had to go here to drop off passengers and pick up more passengers. There's plenty of passengers that want to go from here to Peru or wherever that's going. Yeah. Okay. There, that, that's the dumbest, dumbest thing ever. But the one that really gets me is, um, is the emergency landings yeah. that Eddie, um, Eddie, Eddie documented, right? Every one of them, they went, they went like a thousand miles out of the way and they got there in 15 minutes. Yeah. Wow. People aren't addressing that. Yeah. Like there's an emergency let's fly a thousand miles over here, you know? Yeah. No. And then they're all on the path. Okay. The emergency landings is a killer proof. That's why I kind of try to mention it in every interview I do. Oh yeah. That's, that's amazing. Um, all right. um, I do. And um, what's quite funny as well is um, when um, Max Egan went to uh, disprove, you know, the, uh, you know, this idea of sudden flight plans uh, by flying direct, from Australia to South America, I think. Yeah. Um, he live streamed the whole thing. Okay. Um, he also had a compass with him. And he noticed, you know, because he was, he, was, he was trying to disprove us and say, you know, I'm doing, I'm flying a direct flight, you know, um, and just to prove you wrong. But his compass disagreed with the aircraft's compass mm. and for most of the flight. For some of the flight, he agreed. But for most of that flight, it was it was off. And so I, you know, it's pretty sure, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure is um, they took off, caught the, the southern jet stream, you know, whizzed around the southern jet stream and then um, went back on course and, um, you know, to their Dave, destination. Rob Skiba actually took Max's headings and marked them on a flight path from where he took off to Australia and they made perfect sense. Here he's going oh. northwest, northwest, northwest. And then for a very short period of time, he was going west. Because we know that you can't fly straight and go, go into west. And then it went southwest, southwest, south. And it oh. lined up perfectly. It, that's just a coincidence, though, okay? <laughs> that's just a coincidence. So, so that, and, and, and Dave, if he also did take a, a faster sweeping path with the jet streams, he would get the, you'd get the same readings. It would be yeah, the same, yeah. it would be the same thing, but it works yeah, yeah. perfectly on a flat earth. And I thought that was, was killer right there. That's amazing. I didn't yeah. see that. That was amazing. Yeah. And rest in peace to Rob Skiba too, man. Yep. Yeah. He did, did some amazing yeah. work and got, you know, got well, his way. work will live he's on. I know he's yeah, up, a lot there of for it sure. up there. Um, okay. So uh, can you guys give any advice uh, approaching somebody that is just, indoctrinated to all heck i mean i have some run, away. <laughs> run away <laughs> any advice like to open up the door to where you're not just like you know because obviously you go into a bar and you just say hey the earth is flat you're gonna have to you'll be fighting so any way like to to break that barrier like like i'm talking about gently i'm not talking about like flat smacking them well, what's a good way to open that door so that we could speak to people in a in a professional and and, and courteous manner moon mission yeah, moon mission, especially in the United States, because there's so much, you know, wave the flag, go team. Uh, so the, the moon mission is a great uh, litmus test to see if where they are, 
I, I, I think Dave Weiss has, has done this a few times. You, I'm, I'm afraid to ask early in an interview because if they say they believe we went to the moon, I'm just like, I, I don't even know where to go from there. So sometimes <laughs> yeah. I just pretend that they know we didn't go to the moon. But yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I mean, because because you can you can you can stick you can hammer on the moon missions for a while with people and that'll get them somewhere. And I've even had people come. But even that has a limited effect because the if they believe in the moon mission, they really, really believe just in the space program at large. And I've had people I'm not kidding you where they've said, OK, fine, you know, fine. Apollo is a piece of junk. We you know never met to the moon. But you can't tell me that the space station is fake. I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, seriously, they're just holding on with their fingernails to the, the space program. All you, so, have yeah, to do that's, is, that's, all, all you have to do with the space station, personally, for me, is when they tell you that it's orbiting at 17,500 miles an hour, and then the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, and then we're rotating around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. Do people realize how insane that you'd have to be to jump into that? And like you guys talked about, the vacuum of space and yeah. asteroids and meteors and all these different – and there's so many complications to that. I, I personally just feel it. And then Dave, you had a, allegedly Dave had an amazing, uh, I think it was you that where you talked about how many satellites are in space. And every time they have pictures of the ISS going around like the earth, you're not seeing any satellites whatsoever. So I think it's. There's also the, you know, the idea, because the idea of orbiting came out from um, Newton's cannon, a, a thought experiment Newton had. Yeah. So literally the, uh, the 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 iss is falling to the earth but missing it that's right. the idea so it's, it's falling around the earth but the point is that it's it's now they've turned off another effect that would always happen if you know in that case the the center centrifugal force yeah so if you've got a, a bucket with water in it and you start spinning it around your head yeah right um the water is stuck to the 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 bottom of the a bottom of the bucket yeah as it's spinning around yeah those those um those astronauts should have been a red smear on the outside wall of the uh, <laughs> of, of the iss yeah? Yeah. or at least stuck to that wall as it's spinning around but no 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 they're falling they're not spinning at seventeen thousand miles an hour yeah they're falling no it's, it's rubbish it, it goes against you know if they believe one side of their model they have to disprove the other side of their model right yeah interesting dave you're, you're muted dave i think you want to talk uh yeah mark you're supposed to help me with that Damn it. Uh, the they have the ones that are you know that we that are supposedly moving around the land and we you know faster than the earth is moving those are closer moving faster and then there's a certain distance where <clears throat> the drop would be exactly the same as the rotation of the earth and that's a geostationary satellite <clears throat> there's only a certain amount of space that that works in and then we have somehow we have the uh, epic deceiver, I think, is out there. And now the James <laughs> Webb telescope, which is at a Lagrange point. OK, a Lagrange <laughs> point. Lagrange point is the point where the Earth's gravity and the sun's gravity are neutralized by each other. So you can oh. park a satellite there. OK, <laughs> and even though the Earth is spinning and orbiting and chasing the sun, it could stay in that Lagrange point beautifully. And we can turn that satellite to folk. I mean, that telescope to focus on distant, distant, distant galaxies, you know, where we can do time lapse, which means that it's not moving. Okay. <laughs> right. Time lapse. Right. I watched it. I've been trying to find it. No, there was a Nova show long before I was a flat earther about these giant telescopes to doing, uh, it was about the deep field image. Right, you know, the deep field image shows all the you know, it was for focusing on a space piece of the sky the size of a, of a piece of rice, and we zoomed in and we saw 100 million galaxies, okay, or whatever the number is, right? And it was doing a time lapse where this giant telescope, the, the person it was a long exposure, and the operator had to wear socks because he, he had to walk carefully not to shake the cement pad that it was on because the slightest vibration could ruin the image, right. Are they forgetting that we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour, right. chasing the sun at half a million miles an hour? Okay. Are they forgetting about that motion? And now you put a satellite in space. This thing is moving, mimicking all of that stuff and moving in its own speed just to keep up with the spin of the earth. Okay. 
this this is so ridiculous that most people just short circuit and go, well, I, I'm not a scientist. Uh, you know, you the, the, that somebody with the math figured it out. Yeah. You know, absolute and complete and total nonsense. And the other thing is, did you watch the? Oh, that's not what I want to show. Did you watch um, the 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 launch of the of the James Webb? It went up, and of course, they're showing the curve of the Earth. And then when the telescope launched out, first, we're losing, we lost image, right? Like, we're just above the Earth, <clears throat> and the, the, tel the, the signal is all glitching out, right? So this thing moves away, and then it starts to deploy the wings of the telescope right here above Earth. Are they forgetting that this thing now has to travel a million miles away and go park itself at Lagrange point two, <laughs> L2, if you will. Okay. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is, this is like, they're like, Oh, let's get an old Timex watch, strap it to a salt box. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make some flashes. Right. And, uh, and then we'll deploy it. This thing has to go park itself. No one talks about how it's going to move a million miles from here and park itself. Yeah, James E. Webb is also a 33 degree Freemason, so you know they're they're obviously paying homage to that as well. As that up there, that yeah. flickering distortion. That's a nice new trick. Yeah, look, 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 and it's deploying right here. It's deploying the the arm. No, that's the watch band. Look at it. It's a friggin' <laughs> watch band. Okay, this is what they showed us. This is live. Okay, wow. But we got the curvature of the Earth there. And anyone notice um? You know, on uh, all of these fake missions where, you know, we're sending Captain Kirk up there and everything. Everyone's like, oh, I saw the curvature of the Earth, saw the curvature of the Earth. They all say saw the curvature. And I know you've seen that. But when Felix did it from the space ball jump, you can tell he's lying because he screwed up. He goes, oh, you could see the he couldn't say curvature. Right. Because right. he was because because he, he was lying. Listen to what he says. He screws up the word curvature. Curvative. <laughs> yeah. What did he say? What? He said curvative. Curvative, yeah, because that's when he was lying. He, he couldn't. He's not a good liar. And then damage control yeah. on that as well. You know, Neil Tyson DeGrasse has to come in do damage control. Well, he had a fish-eyed lens. Uh, you can't see it from that high. They just want you to have to literally be a, an actual astronaut to see the the, the curvature, it's a, which is we're not going to ever reach, right? Unless, I mean, as as far as like us, maybe you guys will. I don't know. It would be nice if they if they uh, would try to prove it wrong, but they act like they don't need to and just oh, you know. They brush you guys aside, you know, these they'll never debate you. I know that they wouldn't. I don't think they would, that Neil Tyson Degrassi would debate. Uh, well, no, he, he doesn't. He, he, he doesn't, doesn't have time do for us. He doesn't have time. Yeah. There's no time for talking to Flat Earth. There's Obama told us that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I sent um, a, an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I, that's a great one. Five years ago. Yeah. And um, I not only did I send him two physical letters that is, you know, her work address, well, two of his work addresses. I put it on on all social media. It was uh, mirrored on 50 channels and sent yeah. to him. Mm. <laughs> so he couldn't have ignored it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, no. Um, okay, so let me ask you guys this. How old do you believe the earth is? Dave Weiss, you can answer, Mark. And well, I'm, I'm the least qualified to answer this, but every <laughs> everything to me says, you know, just a few thousand years. Younger. Okay. And young Mark, earth. What do you think, Mark? Uh yeah, yeah. I think I think it's younger, but I do believe that uh of um in other civilizations that were that were doing things before us so okay. do i think it, do i think it's old yeah do i think our civilization only goes back you know five thousand years unbroken history what, sure. 200 years well yeah, depending <laughs> on, yeah that's a whole nother thing uh but uh but yeah i i don't do i think it's billions of years old no i think it's uh it's many thousands of years old um i i actually got inspired by um, Iwar Anon's video, The Lost History of Flat Earth. Um, and so I, I believe in the greater Earth. And, uh, you know, our Earth is just a puddle um, in that greater Earth. And that puddle is moving around the greater Earth. So, um, we, you know, uh, the continents we know of today, um, well, they may not be here in a thousand years. They'll get covered in ice and a new set of continents will be uncovered. Uh, and those continents have buildings on them from the previous civilizations who lived there. Yeah, like Tartaria type stuff. All right. Dave, do you, um, 
what was I going to ask you? It was, um, oh yeah. So I like that concept also. What about beyond the shoreline of that greater pond? Do you think that there's other ponds? I, I actually think that's where the, uh, the, the dome, the actual dome goes over. It goes over the greater earth. Right? And, uh, you know, um, when you go to Antarctica out uh, one particular direction, that's where you hit the 13,000 foot, you know, uh, expand, extent of that dome. Does that make sense? That makes sense for sure. Um, so, so just just a fun thing to, you know, and again, anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, we're just kind of theorizing here. We're, we're looking yeah. around. So, you know, so one, one concept is, you know, we live here and, and this is our, our pond, right? Um, but then there's a greater earth, which you were talking about, where is it? This. So we live here in this inhabitable area and then this moves around, right? Our mm -hmm. North Pole follows this circle and our sun follows the North Pole. And so in 12,000 years from now, the, our world will be over here and this will be an ice age. And, yes. you know, and people migrate with the, you know, civilizations migrate. They don't just stay back and freeze to death. Some of them might. Um, that, that's interesting. But I love thinking about this. Like if we lived <laughs> here, like we live here and just a couple thousand miles away, 10, 20, 50, 100,000 miles away, there's another pond. Another pond, another pond, another pond, another pond, right? And these are the planetes, the pieces of the plane. A, pla a planet, planete is a piece of the plane. So these could be the other planets. Now, whether this is true or not doesn't matter. This is scientifically possible. Mm -hmm. Outer space is scientifically impossible. <laughs> we want the right to go explore. We want to get airships back. We want to go explore these places and, uh, you know, not be held in this uh, heliocentric prison. Um, that's very interesting. Um, uh, so also, I want to ask you, um, you came up with the app, the, the Flat Earth uh, uh, Sun. Can't remember the name. Flatearthdave.com. Just go there. No, no, no. Flat Earth soon, uh, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock uh, App. Okay. So yeah. how fast do you guys believe in this Flat Earth model that the sun and the moon are moving? You know, how fast do you believe they are moving? Um, I can answer. You. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Go ahead. <laughs> so how fast is it moving? I think the sun... Uh, for me, when I watch the sun rise on the on the horizon and set on the horizon, I believe that that sun that I see is traveling less than 200 miles during that day. OK, <clears throat> so divide that out by the length of the day. And that's how fast the sun is moving for me. Oh. But I don't believe that the sun that I see is a physical sun. I believe it is a reflection or projection of the actual sun. Right. So let me let me show you what I mean by that. And I don't know, Mark, if you've seen this and Dave, maybe you haven't. Um, if I can remember how to spell and where O is, I could find it. Um, where is my. It's gone. Um, somebody fill in for me for a second. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> where the hell did it go? I lost. my. Oh, here it is. Got it. Sorry. Um, so right here, I have, this is called my sky sheet. It's the sky. It's where it's become opaque. It's just a sheet. And I have 10 feet on the other side. I have a light. It's actually a square light, but it looks like a round sun. Okay. <clears throat> now Paige is off to my left. I say, where do you see the sun? And she points to the sheet. From her point of view, she sees the sun right there. If I do a circle on the sheet, that's where she sees it. Well, I see it over here at the same time. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we tried to triangulate where we see the sun, well, I know the distance to her and I know, you know, everything. it won't work because we're looking at two different points. And I believe that's how we all see the sun in our inside our personal atmospheric dome, if you will. So the actual sun, well, if it's a physical thing moving around, is it going, you know, on the equinox 24,000 miles an hour? I don't know. Right. But the, the, uh, the, the, um, it depends on where the source sun is. So here, the example I give is <clears throat> get a flashlight and point it on the floor three feet in front of you and then spin around at a rotation of one rotation per minute. So then you just drew in a minute's time a six foot diameter circle. Now all you do is just 
change the angle of that sun a tiny little bit so it's pointing six feet away and spin around at the same rate. That source did not change speed, but I just drew a 12 foot circle. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So is the sun even moving from its original place or is it just focusing its energy, whatever it is, it's probably uh, not a very respectful word uh, for what it is. It's, it's way more than that. It's everything. Um, you know, that's, that's how I envision we see the sun. And, and there's lots of experiments that you can do that like, hey, that matches up with reality. Like you've, you've seen my, uh, my eclipse, Dave and Mark, where the, the moon goes behind the sun. <clears throat> Have you seen it, Dave? You're, you're rolling your eyes. No, I haven't seen that one. No. <clears throat> let me, uh, excuse me, clear my throat here. Let me, uh, let me show you. So if I go to the eclipses section and I go to this puppy right here. So, so here is, here's my, whoops, you can't see that yet. Hold on. <laughs> oops, I have to go back. To, sorry about that. No problem. Where is it? All right. So here is, here is my um, fake sun and the real sun. So I filmed the eclipse and this is the real eclipse and this is my simulated eclipse. I have a paper towel which represents the sky and I have a light behind it and I'm eclipsing the light with a circular object. Um, we'll call it a Snapple cap, if you will. Okay. So <laughs> it's a Snapple cap, isn't it? It's a Snapple cap. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. So, so here's, here's a film. Uh, somebody was filming the eclipse. Now the, the eclipse is like 85% here, but it's blowing out the lens. So you can't tell it. The eclipse is about the same amount as this, right? You have these two objects right here. Now, one of them is moving around with the camera. So that's obviously a lens flare, but why isn't this other one moving? What is this? It's not a lens flare. Okay. And it's the same amount eclipsed as the sun is. You can't tell because it's just too bright to see, but that's how much it is. So I say that's the projector outside or within the firmament. Okay. So we'll jump forward here a little bit. Um, so here's my paper towel sky and I'll show you how I do it right here. And so no one's ever seen the sun approach eclipse or leave. So you don't see it. You just see the eclipse. You don't see what's going on behind the sky, mm -hmm. right? So you don't see the what's eclipsing. You just see it uneclipsing it. It's moving away and you don't see it at all. Nothing you can do will let you see it. So then I thought, hey, what if the sky was a little more transparent than that. I believe that that projector is always there, but you can't see it because the sun is too bright. But during an eclipse, done the right conditions, we're able to see it. So here it is again. I'm doing it again. Look, there's the projector right there. That's the projector I could see through to the projector behind the screen and compare it. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, well, um, that's the no, Nobel Prize winning stuff. Yeah, there, that's good stuff. Yeah. What, the, okay. But, but wait, wait, just let me, let me finish. Yeah, yeah. I don't have proof that that's how it works. Gun to my head, that's how it works. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's my bet. That's my bet right there. Right? And, uh, and it, it appears that that's how we're seeing everything. Where everyone, you know, when you're driving the car and you go, Mom, the moon's following us. And then they go, no, you're not, you dummy. Well, she was wrong. It is following you. They all follow you as you move. Uh, all right, there you do go. You believe that the okay. So, do you believe that the sun and the moon are in the firmament or outside the firmament? Uh, in that, in that thing you just did right now, right now. I, I, I so that so in or within that is that that could be the same thing. <clears throat> it may be above the limits of the firmament, but does yeah. that put it, is, is the firmament paper thin? No, maybe the firmament's millions of miles, hundreds yeah. of miles, tens yeah. of miles. Maybe it's within what we call the firmament. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, just curious. I don't know, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says that the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. What does that so, mean? Does that mean under it or in it? Well, in is like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So a lot of people believe that it's under it. Uh, well, so but, but can, couldn't in be it, like, let's say you had a snow globe and the glass on the snow globe was, could, uh, was, was a foot thick and you had a marble right. in there. Is it, yeah. if it's in the glass or below the glass, which one is in? Yeah. 
I, I believe people, believe, I mean, I, I believe people interpret it as it being it within the firmament or under the firmament ahead, Dave. in the actual firmament, but Dave, go ahead. I, I was, I was actually speaking about this very thing a little while ago about, um, I was talking about um, that before you get to the firmament, right, there is a, there is a barrier of some kind about 75 miles up. Okay. Because of the, uh, the, um, uh, was it go fast rocket that they shot up and it was spinning and going up and it, it hit something and fell back to earth. And then, all of the um, Apollo and the space shuttle um, rockets of all, they all arc under 70, 70 miles. Okay. So that barrier of some kind of barrier that stops us getting to the sun or to the moon. Yeah. Um, maybe that is the projection medium that, that David's talking about. Exactly. That, mm -hmm. That that barrier that's stopping us from going, and I believe there's a barrier as well at the bottom of the sea, stopping you going too far down as well, because right. of um, Mike DeGruy and his uh, mini sub. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I don't know if um, you guys have seen that. Yep, oh, the super sure. the super sailing lake within a within an ocean. Yeah, that's what he calls it. But you know, again, just like the go fast rocket bounced off whatever barrier there, he bounced off whatever layer was down there. Yeah. I think there's a it barrier like to stop us going. Jazz, let me throw something in. Um, uh, Dave, I don't know if you saw about a year ago, or give or take, um, I had a guy reach out to me. He said he was from NASA. I'm like, okay. And so we were emailing back and forth, and he was coming off second. You know, I don't have any proof of who he is or where he is, but the things he was saying was were really lining up that he was with NASA. He figured out the Earth is flat. And um, he said that, that – um, I, so he goes, you could ask me any questions you want. I asked him about the space shuttle. He gave me, whoa, well, what, the ISS, what that was. And he explained how, um, uh, that, that's not the purpose of the story, but we can get into it if you want. But he said that, um, I asked about the firmament. He said, as we go up, and I think about the distances that you were saying, he says it gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and then it becomes solid. And he goes, NASA has the capability to go up there and explore, but we're not allowed to. That's all he said. He didn't say who said we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to, even though they have the technology. Um, and he was frustrated, he said, at, at that, where they weren't allowed to go up and explore this stuff. And then um, he said that he was in the process of moving out of the country. And it got to a point where he, I was getting some pretty good information and bam, he disappeared. So, you know, the, now the Globies will go, ah, that was us. And we were faking it. I, it didn't come off like a globe. It came off as uh, very interesting information. So, uh, wow, that's very, a lot of stuff right there. So, um, so that's, I mean, if you think about the Tower of Babel, you know, in the Bible in Genesis, um, they're, they're building a, a tower up to heaven, right? So, uh, and they weren't allowed, obviously, to go up either. It seems that for me, like what I believe is hell is in the earth and that heaven is above the firmament it seems like god is not going to allow you to go to either one in this physical body and it's just stopping us from, from from doing that that's what i believe when the nasa scientist says that we're not allowed to go there why would god let some freemason astronauts go all the way to the moon but he's not going to let some uh you know obviously uh babylonians travel up you know if it's just a globe it doesn't matter if they go up they're just going to lose oxygen they were so adamant about going up there that um when they would drop a brick, they'd be more mad than if they, if a person fell off of the, the tower they were building is, is, I guess, in the book of Jasher is what it says. So it's very interesting. The Tower of Babel, compare that to what NASA's trying to do. Why would these guys that are scientists that don't believe in God, that are trying to prove them wrong, be able to go up to the moon? But these guys in, in the Tower of Babel can't try to go up to heaven, you know? So I think it's interesting to, to connect those two stories together. It ain't going to happen. We're not allowed to go up there, I believe, until we are spirit uh, in, in a Christian perspective. I want to have Matt Long on the show for sure, man. It oh, seems like he's a good guy. The, <laughs> the, the book, Bible. the book actually talks about um, uh, a certain <clears throat> bloodline who is going to set their nest among the stars, uh, and that that bloodline symbolizes. Oh, I've got sorry, I've got a phone call. Um, okay, oh, it's all right. It's from my stalker, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it talks about um, a particular bloodline, and that bloodline. Um, symbolizes themselves as the eagle so you can follow that eagle symbol around the earth you know so the roman eagle 
you know the um there was a babylonian eagle there was a, an egyptian eagle yeah a german eagle and now the american eagle so it's um it says in obadiah which is which only talks about um the fate of one particular nation right um at the end of the end of days uh it says though thy exalt thyself as the eagle and set thou nest among the stars so there's only one nation has set their nest among the stars and they they symbolize themselves with the eagle and the first words supposedly from the moon were anyone know the eagle, eagle has landed, landed. <laughs> eagle, that's, that Wait. wasn't an accident that you know you know what the first the first words from the moon should have been holy f and s look at the oh. effing earth <laughs> okay <laughs> we're all gonna die holy moly <laughs> i don't believe that people can live outside away from our earth i mean no. you know the isolation being so far away and and i remember in the 60s um i watching news reports um about um test pilots going up you know a, flying flying high and and that they would lose they like like some of them said they could see through their eyes they pass out all, all this weird stuff i think that we need to be here connected to this electrical earth it's like taking something away from the battery it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't work from its power source you know we're all electrical beings this earth is electrical this entire place is electrical everything our hearts are electrical our hearts don't pump blood they electrify your blood so it can travel to where it needs to travel in your body mm. Interesting. Be a clever safety system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So j just recently, one thing that I saw that that uh, my wife, because my wife is she doesn't she doesn't believe in in the flat Earth, but she was like, "What uh -oh. about the, uh oh, oh back it up, back <laughs> it up? Oh, Where is she? It's, it's not... Bring her in, bring her in. I know. Come not on. No, I'm just kidding. Get it's, bring her out. Bring her out it's, here. It's crazy, but okay. So, anyways, oh. so she was telling me about when the moon eclipse, which just happened, and she's like, "Look, look, see, that's the shadow of the Earth." Um, is the moon eclipse something that is is, is 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 can you guys explain the moon eclipse or is that something that we don't we don't know about yet uh, oh no there's there's a there's something called a selenalian which happens actually quite frequently uh and it's where the uh, the sun and the moon you know that's going for a lunar eclipse you know is above the the horizon at the same time which means that the earth cannot be um for causing you know uh, putting shadow, shadow on the earth on, yeah. the, on the moon and also the, the the shadow comes from the wrong direction most of the time so yeah. it comes from above not below so right no, and the other, the other issue is to get a get a single get a light or i you could probably even do it with the sun and get like a basketball and hold it near a wall and cast a shadow on it and then move the basketball away that shadow just disappears. It doesn't get a finer and finer edge. It spreads out and you lose the edge, right? The shadow just disappears. Do it in a dark room with a single source light, same thing. And then when you cast a shadow of a ball onto another ball, you don't get a curve, you get a straight line. Did you know that? What happened to Dave? We lost him. Oh, he'll be back. Uh, he's, probably on his, he's probably on his phone real quick. Just, yeah. uh, okay. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what you're saying for sure. Yeah, keep keep going. You get a straight so line instead of you moment. get a straight line, and um, when uh, when you when you do it, oops, that's not what I wanted. Where am I going here? Um, when you when you cast it onto uh, when you use a flat straight edge, and I'm not saying this does it onto a uh, ball, you get a curve. Mm. You get a curve. So I'm not saying that the Earth is flat and just casting. Yeah. A straight edge. I'm saying the whole idea of a ball casting a shadow on another ball uh, doesn't work. Here it is. We got a ball casting a shadow on another ball, and when we freeze it, it's a straight line. Mm. And then, the opposite. If we cast the ball onto a shadow of a plate, and I'm not saying the moon is a plate, you get a curve line. Mm. Okay, you get a curve line right here. I see. Right, and then and then when you compare that to the actual eclipse. What we're saying is it's not a ball casting a distant shadow on another ball. It's something very local, some um, I, phenomena. I, Go ahead, Dave. I have to disagree a little bit with you. When you, when you sh um, cast a shadow, a, a curved shadow on a, on a sphere, you don't get a line. You literally get an S shape. 
Oh no, that's when you when you move it away, when you when you move it through, it it it'll cast it'll 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 morph from a parabola to a flat to another parabola. Okay, so yeah. that's another problem. Either way, it's not what we see. It's not what we see at all. Mm. Uh, I think the the proof the proof of flat Earth is that. Uh, um, there are so many phenomena in lots and lots and lots of different areas, right? And science has a, um, a an elaborate explanation for each one of them. Yeah, we have one explanation. Yeah, the Earth's flat. That's it. Okay, um, but you know, the for every that's that's the uh, I think that's a um, video I was thinking yeah. of actually, but. Yeah, so we have we have one explanation for for every one of these phenomena that the Earth is flat. That's it. Um, but uh, you know, science science has to have right an elaborate explanation for every single one of these things. Yeah. So Occam's razor says that the Earth's flat and uh, and uh, the ball is is fake. Doesn't Occam's razor say so many people couldn't lie? <laughs> the, 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 so many people can lie. It would be easier. It'd be easier to go than to fake it. No, no. Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson said that. Yeah, he did. Or oh, was that Bill Nye? <laughs> uh, so, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson. Yeah. Oh my God. That faking it would cost so much money and resources that it actually would be right. cheaper to to do it for real. It's like, why, why does that logic even work? Uh, okay. How many people do you think in NASA would have to know about the Earth being flat? Like, how many people do you think they would have to know to actually do one of these missions? You know, do, do, do you think that everybody that's in the control center are all just sold on it being a ball and they're just looking at screens that are not doing anything and, and then just the astronauts know? Or what do you, what do you guys think? How, how many people um, in Chase Manhattan Bank have to know the, uh, you know, the direction of the bank? Yeah. Mm. Only those people in the boardroom. Who would know yeah. everyone else who worked you know thousands and thousands of people who work for chase manhattan bank have no idea what the hell's going on that's it they're yeah. just doing their little little job which con um, contributes to the direction that that bank's going and only those at the top know where that's going justin like harvey justin harvey's down uh trying to film the launch that got canceled this morning and he sent me some pictures and videos um, police have all the roads blocked off. Like you can't get to where you want to get to, to film the Artemis launch today. So I told them to ask the cops if um, they know that the earth is flat or they, they just useless plebes following orders. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So in the military, uh, allegedly Dave, just to jump off that. Yeah. It's you're on a need to know basis. Right. And you don't, you don't even ask questions, you know, you just kind of just do what you do. So, I believe that you, you'd be correct and everybody at the top would know. And yeah, the people would just be following orders. Yeah. I got another interesting observation that I haven't mentioned is um, anybody that's everyone that I've heard that has worked in Antarctica. We have a couple of plumbers. You know, there are people that they have jobs and they look for people to work in Antarctica. When you apply for the Antarctic position, you have to go through like a whole series of extensive interviews asking you what your personal beliefs are, what you're into. You know, they want to know everything about you. What other place does that? Right. What, what, where else do they, you know, do they do that except like, you know, something military? I, I don't yeah, know, whatever. Mil military and alphabet. How is that not discrimination, right? Yeah. Even in the military, yeah. though, they don't ask you what you believe. I mean, they don't, yeah. I mean, as far as that, you know. But that's some discrimination there, you know, if, you, if you're asking people, like, what do you believe? They, they want to make sure you're not a thinker, a truther, a thinker, yeah. right? Yeah. Truthers are thinkers, conspiracy analysts. We're not conspiracy yes. theorists. You guys are conspiracy theorists. You believe, you know, what the news tells you. Those are pure conspiracies. Yeah, a lot of it's all theory, too, that they're believing, I, you know? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get a job in Antarctica then, you know, if I will have to ask, answer the questions with is, whatever you want me to believe. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, perfect, you're hired. So, all right, well, we're, we're coming up on like an hour and 10 minutes. Um, did, so did You guys have seen that um, on, the, on the app, on the Friend Finder, there's, uh, we have two guys in antarctica no. so if we if we go down to antarctica are they, still, are they still there well so so this guy is so this guy at this is at um i zoomed in 
and he's literally in Casey Station, right? There he is. So he's right there. And I was communicating with him back and forth. And uh, I was like, hey, you know, what's going on? And, he, and he's going back and forth. And I go, I go, you know, tell me about Antarctica. And he's what are you doing there? He goes, oh, I just spoofed my location. He goes, I broke it. And there's no way to spoof it. And I said, okay, put yourself at the North Pole right now. And then he disappeared and he stopped communicating. Uh, but um, wow. mo wow. and more interesting is this guy, which is right on the edge. Where is he? Where is he? Is he gone? Oh, no. Hold on. I am showing, right? Okay. Yeah. He, was, he was there. He was right along the edge. Oh, he's gone. Oh, oh no, that's there. Casey. No, that's Casey oh. Station. Oh, okay, I'm just... Okay. I'm just, uh, I'm on the, the Pac-Man map. Well, here he is right here. He, he, so it's like, and this is, this is, I can't get in there. It's, it, it won't, it won't let me get any farther than that to see what's there, but there's uh -huh. somebody there. So this is the same thing that happened with, um, with, uh, you remember the, um, fit, fit, fit what's the Fitbit, fit. the Fitbit, Fitbit. thing yeah. that happened. So Fitbit tracks where you are <clears throat> and somebody <clears throat> went to Fitbit's uh, website and was looking at the tracks and found all of these weird tracks in Antarctica, people running in circles, people going in here and then disappearing and then coming out over here. Yeah. And so they were, all of a sudden that was shut down immediately. Yeah. So we've got two people in Antarctica that aren't talking. All right, the guy out there, the first one, I forget what his name was. Uh, he's had a random name. The other guy's was it's cold here. That's what that was his that was his username. Wow. <laughs> the Fitbit thing was brilliant, by the way, because they they've yeah. forgotten again new technology which was a lot of military guys wear Fitbits. It's like, yeah, why not? You know, performance, check that out. And it wasn't just in Antarctica. There were military bases that supposedly didn't exist you know, in the United States, you know, territory where they were showing, you know, these guys doing squares and it's like, he's zooming in. There's nothing there. <laughs> but these right. guys, apparently there's people walking around doing patrols. It's like, yeah, that, that'll show you. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, we're coming up on an hour and 10 minutes. I know I'm taking, you know, Dave, uh, we only had an hour with you and everything. So um, is there anything you guys want to like any last words you guys want to leave for the audience that were, they're just like that, 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 you know, that you'd like, you guys would like to say. I, go I to Flattoberfest. Go ahead, Dave. There you go. I just like to say thank, thank Dave for allowing us to be on the show with him for, <laughs> for an hour. Thank Stop you. that. Stop <laughs> that. I am honored to be here with you too. You're such a douchebag. All right. You are Neil deGrasse Tyson of the Flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> any, any last words for the audience, you know, before you guys go, this is, I don't, I don't know, hopefully uh, at some point you guys will be back on a, on a podcast together. I think Josh, where are place. you located? I'm located in Southern California. And oh, we so you got up early. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Are you coming to Flattoberfest in South Carolina, October 20th, give or take? Uh, I don't know. It'd be a great thing for my show uh, to meet all it these would be wonderful amazing. people. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll line send, you up with it. Me, I'll introduce you to everybody. Flattoberfest.com, flattoberfest.com or flatearthfestivals.com. Same place. Um, and it's Karen, also in the Karen app. Was, Karen right. was going to try and get me over there for, for it, but uh, I think the restrictions of... Uh, yeah, for, Dave, for, just for just get, get the so, thing. Just do it, Dave. Yeah, yeah, do okay. it. <laughs> do it for Flattoberfest. <laughs> hey, so... <laughs> All right. So is there anything like West Coast uh, that, that, that are lined up for Flato? this is the only that. thing that's happening. This is the one not to miss. Dave's going to fly over from Europe. All right. <laughs> All right. You have to come from California. Flattoberfest.com. It's going to be amazing. October 20, 21 and 22. Um, it's going to be a blast. And it's just getting together with like minded, awake, aware people. There's nothing better. Right. Yeah. Than walking. You know, we're, we go out in the world right now. We're surrounded by NPCs and and uh, and I don't know what you want to call them. It's just there's yeah. so many um, low vibrating people out there. You know, right. not and they're not willfully ignorant. They're just ignorant, right? Mm -hmm. There's uh, everyone. Every one of those blue dots on there. Everyone that shows up at Flatover Fest. Everyone is your best friend. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah there's some beautiful Dave. People you know, you know the conferences that you've been to. Nothing's better than being around those type of people. I, I've got to say, it was. Uh, the most amazing conference I've, I've been to was the one I, that I met you at, um, at the, was it Denver? Um, that was fun. All the, all the people that I've been communicating with and, and bouncing off and, and that, I mean, it's been, it was amazing to actually meet them. 
and bring your wife. We'll convert her right there for you. No problem. <laughs> yeah, said, seriously, I'll just flat smack her right there. Bring your All wife. Right. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll flat caress her. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, then the next day we might flat smack her and the third day we'll flat choke her. <laughs> hey, hey All right, Josh, so, Josh yes, real sir. quick. There is a meetup, by the way, uh, in Southern California, September 24th. Thank you so much. If you, could, if you could email me that, is that okay? I will okay. I will shoot you the link to it as soon as we're done. Thank you so much. Um, and everybody that's 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 listening right now, guys. Um, okay, everybody needs to listen to this. These guys came on here for free. Okay, they're not charging anybody any money to, to, to be able to speak. And they've done countless and countless hours of research. So whatever they have, please support them. You know, uh, Dave, I know he has the app. If you guys want to go to that. Um, I know. Flatearthdave.com. His YouTube page um, is, can you guys shout out anything that they could maybe support you on uh, in, in any way, just to, you know, pu push this thing along? I, I'm, just shocked the day's, I'm just shocked that Dave's not charging you for this. You know, I'm, <laughs> wow. <laughs> maybe I am. I told him not to say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to keep quiet. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, for, for, for me, you can just type in Flat Earth Mark and uh, into Google, you'll, you'll find me. And I actually put my physical address on there. So if anyone wants to mail me anything, I don't care what it is. I get the weirdest. Stuff. For whatever reason, people don't like my head because I get a whole bunch of hats. <laughs> so uh, send me send me whatever you want to my address, and uh, I, I'm more than more than appreciative of it. Awesome. And, and uh, I was gonna I was gonna call myself Flat Earth Dave, but somebody apparently beat me to it. You know? <laughs> no, he, you're, I was gonna be allegedly Dave, Dave, but I'm like, oh, there's already a guy doing that. <laughs> um, the the one one the one of the most fun things on the app I'm upgrading the messaging service it's going to be like iMessage um, and on steroids but every it, it, people are using it as a dating app now right because honestly being with a glober is going to be difficult as time goes on you need to work on her yes. but but again anybody that has a brain and is willing to listen occasionally will eventually come over so don't don't fret you'll you'll she'll get there she'll get there <laughs> I, I, don't um, but, use, I don't want to use the dating um you know part of your app because uh i'll probably end up with mark <laughs> <laughs> well here, here's the thing whether of male female doesn't matter best because all your best friends are on here every one of these people has the potential to be um a really good close friend that you'd like speaking with because we're all awake and aware. All of these dots are awake and aware. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just got to say one more thing because uh, you know, because I've got Mark on here. What? Um, when I was I was doing the flat the uh, the the globe lie tour across Europe. Right. Okay. So we had a we had a bus, um, a, a motorhome, and uh, we had sort of pictures <clears throat> of all the uh, flat earthers, the famous flat earthers over, um, yeah. and we had only had one more one spot to put Mark Sargent's picture, right? And it was over the, the, the toilet window. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so from the outside, it was, you just saw Mark Sargent. But for inside, like, I couldn't go to the loo because it looked like Mark was watching me. Go. <laughs> oh, because the, the screen was over the window. It was, the, the print was over the window. <laughs> no one had no one told me that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah that's a, all right so all right guys so everybody that's listening if you could you know uh, if you want to support uh dave's channel it's going to be d murphy 25 D dave weiss has a uh, deep inside the rabbit hole it's going to be Fla I Fla no 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 flat earth dave.com all my links okay. are there flat earth dave.com easy yes and then mark Sargent. uh he, he, he talked about his so please guys go support them i just want to tell you guys everybody that's listening uh you can spend countless numerous amounts of hours studying the creation the flat earth the geocentric beautiful plane but um how many hours are you guys uh putting in to actually get to know the creator i would just suggest from a christian standpoint please guys get to know god love him with all your mind body and soul uh read the bible please guys it's going to open up your mind and it also lines up with the flat earth perfectly so if you're into the flat earth and you're kind of on the edge pick up the bible god is just waiting for you he's there and and and, and if you knock the door shall be open okay guys so i really appreciate everybody listening uh like every single podcast i'm going to end this in prayer so uh father god in the name of jesus thank you so much for bringing these three wonderful gentlemen together on this podcast um and we are trying to give all glory to you uh this 
this is your creation and you are the creator. We love you. We appreciate everything you do for us from the, the bread we eat to the water we drink. Anything that we have, it's all glory to you, Father. I really appreciate you. Um, and, and help these gentlemen. Put a legion of angels around them. Help them when, um, when they fly to South Carolina or wh whatever they do. Keep them healthy, strong, and uh, keep their podcast going. Uh, don't let anybody you know, try to cancel them or anything because they are trying to speak the truth. And Lord, I know that absolute truth comes from you. So Father God, thank you so much. I really appreciate you and everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming on. This is like one of one of the one of the top shows I think that that, that we're going to end up doing on here, and we appreciate you guys' time, your effort in 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 um, exposing the truth. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. guys. All right. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming on. I really, like I said, I really appreciate you guys. This, this is amazing. Have All right. Doing. And we'll see you, Mark and I, and possibly Dave. We'll see you at Flattoberfest. All right, I'm gonna get the information for that, and also uh, for the one in. Um, yeah, yeah, in, I'll in, send you the, the California thing right now. All right, love you guys. God bless I'll, you. Thank you. Anything else, allegedly, Dave? I was just gonna say, I was gonna see if uh, Karen still wants me to come over, and so uh, maybe maybe restrictions have lifted. I don't know. Uh, I would. I mean, may maybe soon, maybe soon, but it's it's tough. I mean, Novak couldn't make it over here. Novak Djokovic. Oh. That so, we'll see. Um, okay. And Dave, yeah. uh, I want to try to connect with Matt Long, Dave Weiss. If if you if if you if you could try to make uh, if if any way if he's if he's wanting to do interviews, I would love to have him on the show. Dave I will uh, I will check. I don't know if he's doing interviews right now. He's in the middle of a uh, court case for child custody, and he's wow. hidden his channel during the case. Okay, I'm gonna pray for him <laughs> and I'm gonna pray for his family. Yeah, that's tough. So, all right. Well, thank right. you guys, Mark Sargent. Thank you. Allegedly, Dave, thank you again. I will try to definitely have you guys in a... In a Dave, in a, where did you get so. that that um, that um green screen background with people and noise in it? I, I don't have one like that. <laughs> I know that waitress you're, you're, looks you're, so you're, real. You're muted, Dave. You're muted. <laughs> Dave, you're muted. Dave, you're muted. You're muted. Oh, <laughs> we all uh, did no, it. No, I, yeah. I had to pay somebody to film it for me. You know, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's, it looked real, man. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So does this halloumi burger. Look, it's part of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, God bless all you guys. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Josh, send me a link when this is up. I'll share it on the app. All right. Okay. I think I'm going to put it up uh, probably tomorrow morning. Okay. That's and fine. I, send me a link. Send it to you.